Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with srlounge.com. All right, so in this video, we're gonna cover this folders panel here, and it's really gonna be all about file and folder management in this tutorial. It's gonna be really important, so I'd highly recommend you guys make it through this entire tutorial because it is rather long, but it'll help you guys to really understand how Lightroom works and how the file management system inside of Lightroom works. So let's get started. Let's go over first, we have this minus and plus items right here on the top right of the folders menu. So if we click plus, it's gonna allow us to do several different things. Basically minus only does one thing. Minus is gonna actually remove whatever folder is selected uh, from this folder view right here. So if we hit minus, it'll actually bring up the dialog box that says, do you wanna confirm, confirm the removal of this folder? Now the removal of this folder, it doesn't mean that it's gonna delete the images, it's just gonna remove the folder from Lightroom. So they'll still be on our disk. But we don't wanna do that right now, so we're gonna hit cancel. Now going to the plus, we have a few different options. One is to add a subfolder. There's a couple different ways to do this, but this is one of the ways. So if we wanna add a subfolder, and let's do that now, we're gonna say add subfolder, and we're just gonna call this temp1. And then we're just gonna say create. It adds a folder inside of originals that's called temp1. And because we did it in Lightroom, it's, it understands in Lightroom that we create another folder, and it goes automatically in the catalog, and it's also created in the actual file system itself. So if I right click here and I say show in Explorer or show in Finder, we're gonna see under originals that we have this folder actually created inside of Windows as well. So I'd highly recommend doing all the file management directly from Lightroom so Lightroom can control everything and know where everything is. You guys won't have broken file links and everything like that. All right, so going back, we have a few more options here. We have another option which is to add a folder. Now add a folder works slightly differently. So add a subfolder will let you create a subfolder inside of a, a selected folder right here, whereas add a folder is gonna bring up a dialog box to have you choose a, sub, uh, a folder from Windows itself or from your Finder window. So I'm gonna hit cancel and let's what, do this. Let's go back to our originals little uh, explorer right here and let's add a folder in the file system itself but not in Lightroom. So we're gonna call this folder temp2. Actually, you know what, let's do this. Let's add a folder un under, it's gonna be a subfolder in temp1. And we're gonna say this is, whoops, not a shortcut. This is temp2. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to our Lightroom window, we're gonna go back to our folders and hit plus again. This time we're gonna hit add folder, and we're gonna select that folder that we just created. So I'm gonna to go to my whip drive, wherever you guys put it, just go to that source and, and select that folder. Whoops, not under, nope, uh, it's under desktop. There we go. Originals, temp1, and here's temp2. So we're gonna say select this folder and add it. So now it's gonna add that subfolder to Lightroom, and so we now have temp2 underneath temp1, which is underneath originals. Okay, so we're adding folders, we're managing. If we ever need to remove them, we can just click the minus and it'll remove them. But let's go back to that menu right now and let's check out everything else. The next options that we have is this root folder display. And all this does is change the way that the root folder is displayed, just the path. So right now it shows the folder name only, which is just 00 originals. If we want to show the actual path, uh, then we would select this and it's gonna show the root path to get to that folder. Now, I don't find this extremely useful because it just kind of clutters my workspace and I, I don't think this is something I wanna read anyway. So I typically leave it on folder name only. You also have the option of leaving it on folder and path, which shows both. But once again, I like to keep it simple. So we're just gonna keep on folders only. And our last option here is show photos in subfolder. Now what this means is if we have this selected, if we're looking at the originals folder, it's gonna show all the images that are within temp1 and temp2 when this option is selected. So let's show you guys how that works exactly. I'm gonna select the first 10 photos. We're gonna drop these into temp1. And now what this is gonna do is it's actually gonna move these photos on the file system. And since Lightroom is doing it, it keeps track of it. There's no need to update anything. We're gonna select the next 10 photos from our originals and we're gonna go and drop this into temp2. Now, because we don't have that option selected where we don't have this show photos and subfolder selected, when I have originals selected, I only see the 11 photos that are actually in the originals folder. When I pull up my Explorer by right clicking and going to show in Explorer or show in Finder, we can see that only 11 files are actually in this root folder. The rest are in temp1, and then the rest of those are in temp2. Now, if I close this up and I go back here and I hit show folders and subfolder, then automatically it's gonna show all the images that are within the subfolders. Now, I typically will turn this off because I do want to see specifically what is in each folder rather than seeing everything in all of these subfolders 
uh, in inside of this originals folder. It's just more useful to me. But if you guys need to, you know that that option is there and you can show photo, photos in the subfolders if necessary. Lightroom actually should come defaulted with this turned on. All right, so let's move on. We're going to right click on our actual disk drive here, the local disk C, and let's see what we get. We get the show explorer, show and explorer and the properties uh, options, which basically these are both Windows properties or they're going to be file system properties for your operating system, whether you're on Windows or Mac. Show and explorer is going to bring up your explorer or your finder window on Mac and you're going to see the actual drives themselves. Clicking on properties is going to bring up the properties from the file system as well. So it's another quick and easy way to access file system options directly from Lightroom. Let's close this out. And now we're going to drop down and right click on the actual folder itself. And we're going to see some of the same options and some new ones. The first one we have is create a folder inside of 00, 00, 00 originals, which is the exact same function as this uh, one up here where we create temp1 and temp2. So let's do that one more time. And we're going to create uh, another one. We're going to call it temp3. And by the way, I usually come up with better names, but uh, we're going to show you guys how to rename in a second. So it's kind of the purpose of this. So don't call all your folders kind of random strange names like temp1, temp2, because you won't know what anything is. All right, so right-click on originals. So we've added a new folder inside of originals just by right-clicking on it and hitting create new folder inside originals. Next, we have the option to actually rename folders. So like I said, we gave these all temporary names. So if I want to rename them, all I got to do is right-click on one, hit rename, and then we'll call this folder number three which is not any more descriptive than it was prior, but that's okay. All right, so that's how we rename. Let's go back and let's hit remove. So this, catalog, this folder right here is something I don't need anymore. I'm gonna actually remove this folder. We're just gonna right click, hit remove, and now it's taken out of Lightroom. Now this time, because there's no files inside of there, it is actually removed from the file system. So if I go and click, right click on here, go show and explore so we can see our file system view, we won't have that folder that we created, the folder number three folder anymore. All right, so the next option that I have is the hide this parent option right here. Now, what this is going to do is going to promote all the subfolders that are within this folder, and it's going to remove originals. So if I do that, and I do it by accident, I can actually undo it. It doesn't, it isn't something that you can't undo, but we'll, we'll see what it does. We'll hit promote subfolders. Temp1 becomes the new parent folder. Temp2 becomes the new subfolder right underneath that, and originals is gone. Now, it's still on our hard drive, but it's not in Lightroom anymore. So if I hit Control Z, I can hit it one more time, and it's going to bring back my originals folder right there. Let's right click again, and let's go look at our next option, which is to show the parent folder. This is going to do the exact opposite of hide this parent. So for example, if we remove this parent, we're going to hide this parent, remove it, and then we go to temp1, and I say show parent folder, then it's going to import back the originals folder back into Lightroom. However, it didn't import the images back into Lightroom, just the folder itself. So we need to actually do what's called synchronizing. We're going to sync this folder so that it brings in all the images that are stored in this folder back into Lightroom. And so what we can see is that if we go to Explorer, I'm going to show you guys the originals folder. We still see our 11 images here. And so whenever you have images that are in a folder that aren't being uh, imported, that haven't been imported into Lightroom, you can synchronize that folder. So let's show you guys how it works. What we're going to do right now is go back to Lightroom. We're going to right click on the originals folder and we're going to click synchronize folder. Now what this automatically does is it brings up this synchronized dialog box and it detects new photos. So it shows that there's 11 new photos to import. Now if you want to show the import dialog box before you import, you can have this selected. Usually I just leave it off because it's fine the way it is because it's going to import them directly from the, uh, a folder that's already in Lightroom. You don't need to really do much. It's just going to add them where they're at. You can have it scan for metadata updates if you have XMP files or whatever that you have in there, but we don't, and so we're just going to leave that turned off. So we're going to import those new photos, and right away it brings them all back into Lightroom, and so we have our 11 images, well we have 10 images in our one video, back into Lightroom. Alright, so let's do a little more file management, let's go to the next option that we have available. So it is save metadata, and it actually comes before synchronized folder, but it makes sense that we cover it now. So save metadata is going to save out the develop information and all the metadata information for these images from Lightroom into XMP files. And we might remember that we talked about XMP files previously and we talked about how you can actually have Lightroom itself save out XMP files for all images in your entire catalog. Now we did that by going into our edit and going into the catalog settings or hitting control alt comma, which we can bring up now. And uh, right here under metadata, it says automatically write changes into XMP. 
Now, unless you use MP XMP and you need it with every single catalog, I'd recommend leaving this off because it will improve performance by not having Lightroom double up on data that it's saving. So if you ever need it and you need it for say a certain number of photos, maybe just these 11 photos or, or say these 10 photos, that one's a video. Maybe just these 10 photos I want to send to a friend who's using another piece of software and I want to give them the raw files with my XMPs uh, that have the developed settings in them. Well then I just go to originals, I right click on my folder and I just hit save metadata. And that'll automatically save the XMP files to these images. So if I right click and I say show in Explorer, and then I go to my originals, we can see that now each uh, raw file has the XMP file along with it. And I can send all these to my buddy and it'll have all my develop settings right there along with it. So it's a good option and it helps us basically leave off the saving metadata for all the images and just use it where we need to. All right, so the next option in our menu is this update folder location. Now we previously went over that when we were fixing a broken link. So basically, if we break a link, one of these images, or let's say we move a folder inside of the file system itself, it's not gonna recognize it in Lightroom. And we'll do that again just for illustrative purposes here. This is kind of the ultimate file uh, tutorial on file management, so we'll cover it all once again. Let's go back to our Explorer window, or go to Finder if you're on Mac. Go to this Temp2 folder, and let's take this folder that has all these images in it, and let's cut it, and we're going to put it into this temp1 folder. And by the way, that save XMP thing, it actually created XMPs for every single image, not just the ones that were selected. So just keep in mind that. All right, so we've moved this folder now. Now if we go back to Lightroom, because we moved it in the file system and not in Lightroom, this is going to be broken. So once again, we can go to Find Missing Folder, which appears right at the top when it's a broken file and we're just going to relocate that folder by pointing it in the right direction. It's on the A to Z catalog under originals, and then there's temp2. So once we update it, it updates the organization and everything of those folder structure based on the file system. So again, if you need to do something like that, you're better off just moving it from uh, within this folder menu because we can actually move an entire folder within another folder and we can just move temp2. So now temp2 is a subfolder of temp1, and if we want to change it, we just move it back to originals, and now it becomes uh, a folder right underneath originals. So again, doing all of your management from Lightroom is gonna save from having broken files. All right, so we only have a few more options. Let's check them out. We have import to this folder, which is basically gonna allow us to import directly to this originals folder. It's a nice feature because maybe in going through the import dialog box, you wanna save some time and not having to specify the destination. Well, if you click import to this folder, when it brings up the dialog box, it's automatically set the destination. It's gonna automatically set it to that folder that you have selected. So it's just kind of a time saver as far as not having to refine the folder of the destination, and everything like that. It saves one little step there. Next on the list, we have export this folder as a catalog. We talked about how we can make selections of images uh, and export those selections as a catalog itself. We can also select an entire folder and export the entire folder as a catalog. And when you do so, it takes along with it all the Lightroom settings and everything for that folder. So it's a nice way to break off a folder. Let's say your, your Lightroom job gets, your uh, Lightroom catalog gets too large. Maybe you have uh, 100,000 images in there that were all from you know 2010 or 2011, whatever. You guys can break off individual folders from that catalog into a new catalog to make it more manageable. So it's a great feature that's added there as well. All right, lastly, we have two additional uh, file system options, which is the exact same that we had for our local drive, which is just to show in an explorer, and we've done that many times already. And we also have properties, which is gonna bring up the folder properties for whatever folder that we have selected from the file system. All right, guys, so let's finish up our file management by getting all of our images back to where they need to be. And uh, we're gonna go right here. We're gonna select all of our 10 from a temp two. We're gonna put it back into originals. We're gonna select everything from temp one. We're gonna put it back into originals. And then we're gonna take the temp two folder and we're gonna remove it. And then we're gonna take the temp one folder and we're gonna remove it. And if I click show I can explore, we should see that all we have left is just our images, our XMPs, and our original folder. So we're back to where we were, and you guys have mastered, hopefully, the entire file management system and folder uh, panel for Lightroom 4.